Hi, this tutorial will be looking at how to create sequence diagrams in Magic Draw. We'll be using as a basis um, one of my PDF documents which is called UML Sequence and Communication Diagrams in Magic Draw. Alright, and this version is the 5th of November, October 2011. So, in a previous tutorial we created a class diagram. Here is a class diagram with quite a few classes in it, as you can see. Now we're going to use some of these classes, instances particularly of some of these classes, to create a sequence diagram. To do this, we need to create first of all what's known as a instance scenario. So we make up a story basically from any information we have using those classes and we create a set of steps. Here they are. Here's an example. Joan Smith, who's an instance of client, phones Anne Page, who is an instance of administrator, to make an appointment with Dr. Coates, who is an instance of GP. And we carry on like this till we finish off our particular scenario we're interested in. So, let's go back to Magic Draw and start creating this scenario. Here we are in Magic Draw. We have our class diagram. And now we create a sequence diagram. So to do that, the easiest way is to look for the sequence diagram icon at the top, which is that one there. Click on it. And it asks us to give the new sequence diagram a name. We'll call it appointment, following my detail in my handout. I make sure it belongs to data, so we have data collected there, and say OK. Then we have our new sequence diagram in front of us. I hate the grid line, so just right mouse click there, choose grid, and take off the grid. So now we're going to create several instances of the classes we had. And we need to create around about 13 instances. So what you do is simply drag the class from the containment key on the left, and then it creates an unnamed instance on the right. So let's start. So we'll first of all, look for client. There we are. Drag it over, and it's given us an instance, an unnamed instance of client. To change that to a named instance, just double click on client. We can type in the name here. And we said our client was called Smith, didn't we? You'll notice that you can move it in this instance left and right, but you can't move them up and down. So we'll keep doing that until we've got all 13 instances in. So here we are, added all our 13 instances. Yes, yeah, so they're all along the bar top, and I have to use the scroll bar to actually see each one. I could also actually decrease the size of my diagram by using the zoom out icon at the top there. have a reasonable size and just zoom along for the time being. Here we are. So, we can get several messages now between these instances. Um, there are four types of messages really, four main ones. There's a simple signal message, there's a call message which calls a operation in the target class, or there's a create message. Um, we'll be looking at the simple um, signal message and the call create message to begin with. So looking back at our document, which is what we're basing this scenario on, the first message we have is Joan Smith phones Anne Page to make an appointment with Dr. Coates. So we've got to actually mimic that in the diagram now. So here we are, we have Mr. Smith, our client, and we're going to just indicate a message between him and and page the administrator. So we simply choose the send message and click on our first lifeline and click on a second elf lifeline. And that's it. And it asks us if we want to give a name or not to this signal. And we'll say request appointment for the name.
that's that done. So that is how you create signal messages. Alright, so if you remember that the send messages are the signal messages. Right, now we're going to create a create message because what happens is when Mr. Smith speaks to the administrator, she actually creates appointment. The appointment is the instance 23456. So to show that this instance is created when she interacts, we're actually going to create a create message here. So we just choose the create message option here and go from the target administrator to the appointment instance there. And notice we could put the name create here if we wanted to. I'll talk a little more about that later on, but we don't really need to. All right. Notice it has moved the lifeline down to indicate that that doesn't exist um, before that point in time when it's created. We carry on in the same vein to create our whole scenario that we described in the instance scenario before in this sequence diagram. And I'll show you what it'll look like in the end now. We look back at our PDF document. You can see on page 7 or 8, I think it is. Page 10, we have the final result. So it's exactly the same as what I've been doing there. These are all just simple signal messages or create messages. So we have here, create the appointment. Then we create the visit, then we create the treatment instance, a problem instance, another treatment instance, another diagnosis instance, and an appointment instance. The important thing to realise is here that we're creating instances of non-person based classes as well. People seem to get hung up um, with sequence diagram, thinking that they're only showing interactions between people. No, they're showing interactions between any class within our model. And remember, most of the classes are to be collecting data, which is the important thing, because often this is mimicked in the way we create a database at the end of the day. So here we are in our first cut sequence diagram with um, various create messages and various signal messages, as they're called in the menu, send messages. Probably what we want to do now is actually make our actual model more complex. And the first thing we might do is we might change some of these messages from signal messages to call messages. So you think you might be able to just click on the message and then perhaps change some option and it will convert it. Well, uh, it doesn't seem to work that way. You have to delete the, mes the message and create another one, which is a call message. Just before we do that, we'll just have a look at the overview class diagram again. I just want you to notice that um, the administrator class does not have any operations in there at the moment. And also, if you notice in the containment panel, we've got a whole set now of these bubble things, which represent the instance names, and we've got these little squares which represent the lifelines which are instances. So let's delete this message and change it to a call message. So we just look for the call message option, there we are. Select our originator instance and then our target instance. And this time we get a slightly different message, it's got a bubble on it. If we click this bubble, it asks us what the name of the operation is that's evoked when this message hits its target. And we know what it's going to be called, we're going to call it request appointment. most difficult thing I found about Magic Draw is actually typing in the names. Right, so close out and there we are. Now we have request appointment. Now if we go back to our overview class diagram, guess what? We've got a request appointment operation in our target class. Shown here as an instance of it. Obviously besides creating the operation on the hoof as it were there, and we can create a call message that uses an operation that is already within the class. 
back in our uh, PDF document um, I've actually got this exercise here to create some new operations into the classes which we will then use to create other messages so let's go back to our class diagram or magic draw rather and create these additional operations in the classes in magic draw there are several ways we can actually create operations for classes um, we can actually use this containment window and say we wanted to create um, some more uh, operations in the administrator class we could look for the administrator class here then right click on it where it says new element then we choose operation and we create our operations that way that's the best way to do it if we haven't got any diagrams with that particular class in we just might have to define it without actually creating a class diagram but into our class diagram the easiest way is simply to click on the administrator or the um, appointment whichever we're going to carry out first which class choose administrator and then two bubbles turn up one allows us to create new attributes and one allows us to create new operations so I'll click on there and we create a new operation what I want to do is call this one um, check appointment then press return we can create another one and this one we could call this set availability and we've got one final one which is update appointment then we'll click off there you'll notice that the actual box is resized to show us all the operations we've created and we just create one in appointment as well so click the bottom bubble and we're going to call this one update click off it rather than pressing return it's not a creation of a creation there we are now if we wanted to actually use one of these operations in our sequence diagram we would just go back to the sequence diagram and choose a message and then choose an option which I'll demonstrate now so in my PDF document once again I have a little example of how we can make use of these um, operations we created looking at a scenario we created first of all I have a sentence in which says at the specified time Joan Smith turns up and introduces herself to Steve Brown who's the administrator who updates the appointment 23456 setting the status to arrive so what we want to do is now is allow this to be shown in our sequence diagram that is Steve Brown instance of administrator updates appointment 23456 and if you remember in the appointment class we created a operation called update so we want and now a message to go from him to the instance that appointment instance say update it going back to magic draw we have here our two instances we're interested in Steve Brown and appointment we've got dot coats in between them we'll just drag her to the side and move him closer to so what we're going to do is create um, now a call message from Steve Brown to appointment now this time do not click on the bubble because the bubble will create a new operation we don't want a new operation what we want is to use our old operation and if you notice if we right click on the actual message line now we have variation of options and right down the bottom here we have synchronous call message and it shows us our operation update appointment and if we did the same there in asynchronous call message it will show us the same option choose a synchronous call message and click the operation we're interested in 
and it's automatically updated our message using the method and operation that we specified earlier. You may have noticed in the last message that though I specified a operation, I didn't specify what the operation should actually do or what value it um, passes. Right, we can actually look again at that sentence and notice what we missed out. At the specified time, Joan Smith turns up and introduces herself to Steve Brown, who updates the appointment 23456, setting the status to arrived. So we want to actually model this idea of setting the status to arrived in the particular uh, instance of appointment. So what I'm going to do first of all is in the appointment class I'm going to add a new attribute called status so I can actually save some data in my uh, instance of appointment. So let's go back to Magic Draw. And we'll go to Class Diagram. And there's the appointment. And this time we just click on the Insert New Attribute. And we call this Status. Click somewhere off it to stop us getting another attribute offered. And there we have our new attribute in the appointment class. It has done nothing at all, you'll notice, in our sequence diagram. Now what we want to do is actually add a parameter to our update operation. That is, we want to be able to say that that update operation takes a particular value in it and passes it along. So we have here update already highlighted in our containment window. Double click on it or right mouse and choose specification. It does the same thing. Double click on it. There we are. Now you want to choose the parameters from the tree on the left. And we notice that there are no parameters. This particular operation actually doesn't take any values or anything at the moment. So what I do is click on here, create on the create button and create a new parameter. We're going to call this new parameter status. And we can also give it a default value. So if someone doesn't specify what value they pass in that operation, it's going to assume that it means that they've not arrived. So we've done that and say close. And notice now we've got update equals status is the parameter. But we want to actually specify that parameter to be a particular value that the administrators pass into the appointment is saying update that particular value for the instance of appointment to status means that the patient has arrived. And we just do that by clicking on the parameter and very carefully typing in just after the equal signs arrived. There we are. So now we're saying is that Mr. Brown updates our appointment instance and changes the status value from whatever it was before to arrived. So what have we achieved? We have created a sequence diagram in Magic Draw. We've created named instances from class we'd already defined. We could have actually done it the other way around and created the class and named instances in the sequence diagram. We created simple signal messages as a first start to our model, which we then adapted to change to call messages. That is messages that call up an operation in the target class. And we did that by associating them with operations either on the fly by clicking a little bubble or from pre-existing operations that were in classes that we'd already defined. And we also added further complexity by adding parameters, that is we allowed specific data items to be passed in the message and we also specified particular values for those sets of bits of data we passed in the message. You can find out more details at my website www.robin-beaumont.co.uk slash virtual classroom slash contents html I'm specifically looking at section 11 there. 
Um, obviously, you realise my stuff's on YouTube because this is where you are watching this. And also, if you typed my name into Google and put Health Informatics, you'd find other material by me. Bye.